Joyce Meyer Ministries dankt haar donateurs die deze uitzending mogelijk maakten. Jesus is not real vague. I mean, if you really just read it, he tells you exactly what to do to have a great life. And uh, he also tells you if you don't do it, then you're not going to have a great life. So anybody who really wants to have a great life, all you need to do. We're going to start in Matthew chapter 10, verse 1. Today we're talking about the authority that has been given to the believer by God. Everybody say, I have power and I have authority. We looked at a scripture last night and we will probably look at it again today that tells us that Satan has power but it says that we have power and authority. So there's a difference. He has power, but he only has the authority that we give him many times through lack of knowledge. For example, do you know how many angry Christians there are that go to church every week? And they're angry, they're mad at somebody. Oh, we even go to church with people we're mad at. <laughs> Sit next to them and sing our little songs on the overhead, get out in the car and go fight again all the way home. <laughs> so many people are living in strife. They're full of bitterness and resentment. And they've convinced themselves it's just too hard to forgive. It's, it's just not fair. They've been hurt too bad. And yet the Bible tells us plainly, everybody say plainly. <laughs> you know, Jesus is not real vague. I mean, if you really just read it, he tells you exactly what to do to have a great life. And uh, he also tells you, if you don't do it, then you're not going to have a great life. So anybody who really wants to have a great life, all you need to do is read the book, listen to the messages, and then take action and go do it. In Ephesians 4, it says, do not let the sun go down on your anger. Now, I don't have to try to figure that out. That's not a mystery. Do not let the sun go down on your anger. Do not give the devil any such opportunity. Don't give him a foothold. You know what happens? If we give the devil a foothold, then it's not long, and he gets a stronghold. And that's what becomes very dangerous. So really and truly, we need to watch for the little things that we often think don't matter, but they turn into huge problems if we don't deal with them. So we need to learn that we can give the enemy authority and access to our life by simply not doing what God tells us to do. Now, obviously, there's forgiveness, and God helps us, and he rescues us, but that's not the way he wants us to live. He does not want us to live in the emergency room of life all the time. Amen? He does not want us to be in intensive care week after week after week. He wants us to get to the point where we know what to do to have a great life and we take responsibility for ourselves and we do it. Adam gave away his authority in the garden. And the devil actually said to Jesus, recorded in Luke chapter 4, all of this is mine and I'll give it to whoever I want to. It was his because Adam gave it to him. But guess what? Jesus took it back. He took it back, and it belongs to those who will believe in Jesus and not just believe in Jesus, but believe that that power belongs to you. See, I think one of the mistakes that we think is we think, well, if I'm a believer in Christ, then all this other stuff is an automatic. No, not really. You have power if you believe you have power. You experience the blessings of being made right with God when you believe that you've been made right with God. Even though maybe legally you are the righteousness of God in Christ, if you don't believe it, then it affects you as if it wasn't even true. And you need to know that you have power and authority, and you need to let the devil know that you know that you have power and authority, because sometimes he's a bit dumb. And we need to reaffirm to him over and over not, you are not, not ruling and running my life. 
Now, you know, I don't know where you're at and all this devil stuff and Satan stuff. And, you know, I told some of my team coming here, I said, I'm going to talk about the devil a lot this weekend. And I don't want to scare people or spook people. And, you know, I know there was a time in my Christian walk where, I, I mean, I, I went to church for years. I never heard anybody talk about the devil. I didn't. And, and we need to talk about him. Jesus talked about him. There's all kinds of scriptures about the devil and demonic forces. And, and we see his influence everywhere that we go in the world today. Anytime you see good, it's God. And anytime you see evil, it's the devil. God is good, the devil's bad. It's not hard to figure out. When I do something good for someone, then that's God's influence in my life. When I do something uh, mean to someone, then that's the enemy's influence in my life. Amen? So Matthew chapter 10, verse 1, when Jesus sent his disciples out to minister, and you are a disciple of Christ, and you have also been sent out to minister in your little corner of the world. We all minister in different ways. It might not be from a pulpit like this, but our lives are to be a living epistle read by the people around us. People should know that you're different, that you, we should have something they want, be salt and light in a dark and a tasteless world. So Jesus summoned to him his 12 disciples, and he gave them power and authority. Ooh, say power, power. Authority. authority over unclean spirits to drive them out and to cure all kinds of disease and all kinds of weakness and infirmity. Now let's look at Mark chapter 16, verse 17. And these attesting signs will accompany those who believe. And I personally don't think this just means those who believe in Jesus. I think it means those who believe that these signs will follow them. You're never going to experience the gifts of the Spirit in your life or the supernatural power of God in your life if you don't believe in it. So part of my goal this morning is to show you how God has equipped us. He did not just leave us unable. He has equipped us to stand up to whatever comes against us in life. And like I said last night, we can go through very difficult things, remain stable, remain godly, and remain useful to the kingdom of God because of the power of God that's ours as his gift. So these signs will follow those who believe. These signs should follow them. <laughs> in my name, they will drive out demons. They will speak in new languages, that's talking about the gift of speaking in tongues that's talked about in the Bible. They will pick up serpents, and that doesn't mean you're going to play with snakes. <laughs> serpents throughout the Word of God is a synonym for the devil or for evil powers. And to pick them up simply means that you will handle them and they will not handle you. Amen? Amen. And even if you were to drink something deadly... <laughs> It won't hurt you. You know, we have so much power in us, so much anointing in us. The anointing is the presence of God in your life. It's power. It's ability. It is enablement. I was in church for years and years and years. Never heard the word anointing. I knew God had power, but nobody ever told me I had power. Well, I'm telling you today that you have power. If you are a believer in Jesus Christ, then you need to renew your mind and get over the I can't, I'm unable, it's too much, I'm weak. We need to be confident. You know how valuable confidence is? What kind of a mess would I have in here today if I came up here and we said, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know if I got the right message and... I don't know if the people are going to like me. Well, you know, you'd stay here about five minutes, if that long. We have to be bold and confident. And it doesn't need to be an act that we put on. We need to know who we are in Christ, 
hold our head up and get out in the world and be the kind of people that God wants us to be. They will lay their hands on the sick and they will get well. I want to make a suggestion to you. When somebody tells you they're sick, don't just say that's a shame. Be bold enough to ask them if you can pray for them. Can I pray for you? If they're uncomfortable with you praying for them right then, then pray for them in private. But very often, it kind of maybe shocks people, but they like it too because somebody cares about them. And you have an anointing in you that can be felt by other people. Even though they don't know what it is, there's something about you. That something. I've shared this two or three times, but it just was so funny. I have to share it here this morning. I met a girl when I was out in public. I was actually getting my nails done, and she recognized me because she watches me on TV. And she was obviously someone who loved God but wasn't familiar with some of the things that I'm talking to you about today. One of the things she was not familiar with was what the anointing is or how that manifests or, or what that is like. And so she proceeds to try to tell me how much she likes my TV program, and she said there's just... And she starts doing this. She said, there's just, there's, you have this. <laughs> and then she'd stop and she said, this, this aura, this, um, and she kept doing this. And it, I, it was just so funny to me because what she was talking about was the anointing. She was talking about the power and the influence of God, but she didn't have any words to put to it. So I'm just telling you, you've got... Every one of you, if you're a believer in Jesus Christ, you've got that. You've got that Holy Ghost oomph, and you need to stop dragging yourself through life like the end of hard times, thinking that you just can't make it, and everything is too much for you, and I'm just, you know, I have a problem, and I'm pitiful, and, you know, if I could just not have any problems, then maybe I could be happy. No, we are anointed by the Holy Ghost to have problems and still be happy. Because the great privilege we have when we have problems, we don't even have to worry about them. Be anxious for nothing, but in all things, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God, and the peace that passes understanding shall keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. As soon as you get a problem, pray. The moment you pray, you release God's power. The moment you pray, you release God's power in your life. The moment you pray, angels are released from heaven to bring answers. But I wonder how many trips they have to make back. Because we get them coming, we send them back. We get them coming, we send them back. We get them coming, they send them back. Must be kind of tough to be an angel these days. <laughs> Luke 10, 19, I read it last night, but I know we have new people here today, and it's one of the very foundation scriptures for what I'm doing this weekend. So I want us to look at Luke 10, 19. Behold, that means look and see. Wake up, open your eyes. <laughs> I have given you. Not I will, I might. I have given you power to trample upon serpents and scorpions, and I've given you physical and mental strength and ability over all the power that the enemy possesses, and nothing shall in any way harm you. Now, if you look at this right, he says that you have power and authority. It only mentions the devil having power. So he does have power, but he has no authority to use it. Come on. Unless we give it to him. Now, what we really need to do 
is learn how to exercise this authority. Authority is something that you have to walk in. There's an air about authority. Authority has a walk. Authority has a posture. <laughs> authority has a way that it holds its head. Authority looks at people when you're talking to them. You don't. You look at people. When you shake somebody's hand, you shake their hand. You don't break their hand, but you don't hold it like a wet, dead fish either. And most of all, more than even trying to exercise that authority in this realm, you need to know how to exercise that in the spiritual realm. You're exercising your authority with God when you pray, and you're exercising your authority against the devil every time you bind him, rebuke him, resist him, and especially when you speak the word of God against his lies. Now, I'm just going to tell you, if you want to be a full-on victorious Christian, it is not a part-time job. It is not something that can happen in 45 minutes in church on Sunday morning. So just get over thinking that, well, I go to church is all there is to it. I just really am so tired of hearing that. Well, I go to church every week and I don't understand why I don't have victory. Are you doing anything you heard? You know, we are overeducated and under-exercised. How many times do you need to hear a sermon on the, on the importance of forgiving people before you will stop staying angry for even five minutes? You're not hurting people when you stay mad at them. They're out having a good time and don't even care that you're mad. But you hurt yourself when you stay angry at them. You're poisoning your own self, opening a door for the enemy in your life. We are smarter than that. We have the mind of Christ. We are smarter than that. Christ is our wisdom from God. We have wisdom. Don't you already feel better about yourself? You can go out in the world and they'll beat you up, but you come in here and I'll build you up. You have power and authority. Now, we need to learn to be a little more vigilant, a, li a little more tuned in. Uh, in Ephesians, it says, wake up, sleepy church. <laughs> wake up. What's a sleepy Christian? They just don't, they're not connecting with what's going on around them. They're just kind of lulled into mm, whatever. Mm. You know, just because you want the devil to leave you alone doesn't mean he's going to. That's right. The only way he's ever going to, you're ever going to have any even decent breaks from his annoying self is to get to the point where he knows the minute he comes around you that you know who you are and you're going to put him in his place. Let's look at 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 8 and 9, and we're actually going to look at this same scripture again tonight because this, to me, is probably one of the most important couple of scriptures in the Word of God when you're talking about learning how to walk in your authority and to resist the enemy. 1 Peter 5, 8. Be well balanced, temperate, you don't know what that means. It means disciplined. Sober of mind, that means serious. Be vigilant, that means you keep it up, you keep it up, you keep it up, you keep it up, you keep it up. And cautious, that means we live carefully, not foolishly, every once in a while. the time now see that's where we have problems with this 
all the time, all the time, all the time, all the time, all the time. See, some of you are already tired. You're like, this just wears me out listening to it. <laughs> For that enemy of yours, the devil. <laughs> we have a testimony from one woman. She said, I kept running across, she called me this lady, Joyce on TV. And I didn't like her. I'd go to another channel, and then I'd run into her again. She said, finally, I decided to listen a little bit. And one day, she was screaming about, Jesus said to the devil, and the devil said to Jesus. And I, she said, I thought she was a lunatic. <laughs> but eventually, she heard enough that something started to make sense. And long story short, she's now a full-on Christian serving God. And... So it doesn't really matter to me if you think I'm a lunatic as long as I can get through to you that there's more for you than what you have. And God is alive and well, but the devil is alive and well on planet Earth too. God has a plan for us. The enemy has a plan for us. The thief comes only to kill, steal, and destroy. But I came that you might have and enjoy your life and have it in abundance to the full until it overflows. Which do you want? I'm going to tell you that the good things of God don't always just fall on you <laughs> while you do nothing. You've got to stand your ground. For that enemy of yours, the devil, roams about like a lion, roaring in fierce hunger, seeking someone to seize upon and devour. Now, that tells us right there that he can't just devour anybody he wants to. He has to find somebody that has the right conditions in their life for being devoured. And I've taught a whole four-part series just on line one, be well-balanced. Because that is one of the biggest open doors in our life, is we always want to get in the ditch on one side or the other. We don't do enough, or we get a revelation, then we do too much. We're not helping people at all, then now we just help everybody all the time, and now we're falling apart because we're so busy helping everybody, we don't take care of ourselves. Come on now. <laughs> You spent years not doing any kind of service work in church, and now, boy, you just, you're on every committee, everything. Now you got burnout. You're mad at the church. You think they're taking advantage of you? Come on now. Be well balanced. Well balanced. Verse 9 Withstand him, be firm in faith against his onset. I love that. The minute the devil makes a move in your direction or whispers one little lie to you, immediately, not a week later, immediately you come back against him with the Word of God. <laughs> can I just get Pastor Freddie to pray for me? <laughs> yeah, you know what? When you're a baby Christian and don't know anything, that works for a while. But we're now in the grow-up session. Don't come to my meetings or watch me on TV if you want to stay a baby all your life. We're long past that stage. This is about fighting the good fight of faith. Standing firm, being vigilant, being strong. Not only taking ground for yourself, but for other people. You think I don't have to fight in order to be able to come and help you? You know how many battles I have to deal with in order to help you? It has nothing to do with me. All this does for me, this gift God has given me, is it makes me work. <laughs> That's what I get out of this. But you're being helped, so I get a deep satisfaction in my spirit because I'm doing what God has given me to do. And every person, when you step into the call of God on your life, and we all have a call on our life. Your call may be to be the best parent to three or four kids that you can possibly be. That's a great calling. Maybe you 
have a husband that's really accomplishing a lot in the world, and your call is to be the best wife that you can ever be. But we are called to be something besides a mess. <laughs> There's no call to be a mess. Withstand him, be firm in faith against his onset, rooted, established, strong, immovable, determined. Boy, I love that. Let's read it again. Whew. Rooted, established, strong, immovable, determined. One more time. Rooted, established, strong, immovable, determined. Now that annoys lazy people, but that flips my switch. Knowing that the same identical sufferings are appointed to your brotherhood, the whole body of Christians throughout the world. So basically he's saying, hey, when you got a problem, <laughs> you are not the only one going through things. The devil hates anybody that's trying to do anything good. You know, we really do need to remind ourselves daily that we have power and authority in Christ to overcome situations in life. Well, this handsome little guy's name is David, and he's 12 days old. He was born two months early, and he weighs 1.6 kilos. You know, if it wasn't for this wonderful home here in Kampala, Uganda, that cares for orphan and abandoned children, he would not have made it. But because of the work that the people here are doing, and we're in partnership with them, many children are having an opportunity for a brand new life. So we just want to thank you for being involved. I think it's a great work. God bless you. See you.